This is a ribbon sensor. It can detect the finger position and we can send that data to a computer via Arduino. Then we can map that finger position data to a synthesizer. Let's map it to a pitch. Perfect. Okay, let's add more features so that it's gonna become more like a musical instrument. Let's figure out how we can control the volume. First approach that comes to mind is using another type of sensor. So let's use a knob. Very simple solution. Okay, let's keep adding more features. How about adding a filter control? I guess we can add more knobs. This is fine, but we can't really control two knobs with one hand at the same time. Of course, we can use different sensors like an accelerometer, which provides us with two simultaneous controls. But what if we wanted to add even more synth parameters, like FM synth modulation, for example? So this illustrates one of the issues of one-to-one -one mapping, which is where we map one sensor data to only one synth parameter. An example of this is mapping the finger position to the pitch as we did earlier. This is perfectly fine to do, but this approach can be inefficient. So can we get more out of one individual sensor? Could we perhaps do a one-to-many mapping? Sure, we can easily do that, right? How about mapping the finger position to the volume also? I mean, sure, this works if we want our low notes to be much quieter than the high notes, but this isn't what we want. Okay, so we're presented with a challenge. How do we control the pitch and the volume with one ribbon sensor? How about we take a look at an acoustic instrument for reference? Here's a guitar and I'm going to slide across the fret in two different ways. As we can hear, the speed of the finger movement affects the loudness. When I slide faster, the guitar sound is louder and vice versa. Awesome! So we should be able to do something similar with the ribbon sensor. Here's a max patch that calculates the speed of a finger movement. As we can see, this slider increases when the finger movement is fast and vice versa. Alright, let's map it to the volume parameter. Awesome. Let's listen to the speed being mapped to a filter parameter instead of volume. We can of course add another sensor in addition to what we have here. So, as we can see, we don't have to overwhelm ourselves with tons of sensors. We can have plenty of intuitive controls, even with just two sensors by implementing one-to-many mapping. And we can do one-to-many mapping with other sensors. Let's try it with a light sensor. The synth gets louder as the movement becomes faster. You can download this patcher and try it out. It's not the most refined, but it's enough to get started. It was definitely good enough to demonstrate for this video. I may improve it and update the link in the future. Here's a list of stuff that could be improved upon, or different approaches that you could try out. This video is more of an overview and introduction to the concept of one-to-many mapping. Complex mapping can provide rewarding complexity that encourages years of practice to develop and achieve virtuosity as well as expressivity. There was a study where simple mapping and complex mapping were compared. For one-to-one -one mapping, Participants noted that it was not very stimulating because they were able to learn quickly but found it difficult to continue improving their performance and expressive output. As for complex mapping, participants found that the instrument felt much more engaging. It did require more time, effort, and practice to master it and achieve satisfactory results, but they found this to be appealing. The instrument presented a challenge to the user as one would expect from a traditional, expressive instrument. I talk more about the idea of expressive instrument in this video. I highly recommend it if you're interested in this topic. So next time you're coming up with a new instrument design, one-to-many mapping should help you brainstorm ideas. As you experiment with a sensor, go beyond just the raw data and explore what you can do with the speed and acceleration of data changes. And even if you have a finished instrument, chances are one-to-many mapping will add more expressivity to your project. Thank you for watching and always feel free to share what you're building or what you have finished building. I would love to see them. Okay, see you in the next video.